This is the probable cause affidavit uh, out of Cohasset Police Department in Massachusetts regarding Anna Walsh and her husband who is now being detained on a $500,000 cash bond for interfering and misleading the police in her missing persons case. On January 4th, 2023, the Cohasset Police Department responded to a call of service related to a well-being check at Chief Justice Cushing Highway. Patrol unit suspected Ms. Walsh to be a missing person, and I was subsequently requested to the scene to insist in the investigation as a member of the Cohasset Police Department's Criminal Investigation Division. January 4th, 2023, at 1835, I arrived at the address to investigate a missing person, Anna Walsh. Investigators interviewed Walsh multiple times in relation to the disappearance of his wife. He was asked specifically to provide a timeline for the days of January 1 and January 2, and did so on multiple occasions. He related that they had a New Year's Eve dinner with a friend, Jem, which he and Anna hosted at their home. Jem arrived around 8.30 and left at 1 or 1.30 a.m. He related he and Anna went to bed shortly after Jem left. He further related Anna told him she had a work emergency and needed to fly back to D.C. in the morning. He relayed that Anna got ready and kissed him goodbye and told him to go back to sleep. Anna will usually take an Uber, Lyft, or taxi to the airport. Anna left between 6 and 7. He and Anna have three children. He got up around 7 a.m. and made breakfast for the boys. In the afternoon, a babysitter arrived at the house. He left to run errands. He stated he went to Shaw's to get orange juice and milk and then came back home. He left again about blank to see his mother, who lives in another town in Swampscott. At the time, he did... Oh, he got lost because he did not use his GPS. We found that out earlier. He relayed that he drove to his mother's house in Hingham using Route 3 North, Route 93 through Boston instead of taking Route 1A. Uh, he took Route 1 and then maybe Route 114. He related the commute should have taken about 70 minutes, but ended up taking 90. Within about 15 minutes of arriving at his mother's condo, he left to run errands for his mother at Whole Foods and CVS in Swampscott to get groceries, cleaning wipes, and then he went back to his mother's condo, then arrived home to Cohasset at 8 p.m. He relayed that one of the boys must have taken and lost his phone during New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. He relayed that Monday, January 2nd, his cell phone was found under a pillow. He said on Monday, January 2nd, he took blank for ice cream while his babysitter watched blank and blank. He took blank to get chocolate shake at Press and Norwell. Friday, January 6th, a massive search that included canine officers, Metro LEC search and rescue, state police cert team members, state police investigators, Cohasset police, and other local police partners was underway for the missing person, Anna Walsh. The search resumed on the morning of the 7th. That afternoon, at least six investigators were tasked with driving to the North Shore of Massachusetts to verify his route of travel and verify his visits to establishments like Whole Foods and CVS. The investigators were reassigned from other tasks and efforts to locate Anna. Multiple investigators spent hours in the afternoon and evening of January 7th traveling and viewing video. He was not observed on any video from Whole Foods or CVS in the time frame that he said he was there. He has been convicted in federal court of felony fraud by wire and is currently on pre-sentencing probation. The probation conditions include monitoring and home confinement. He must request to leave from his home each week and specify the time and need for the leave. In the week of Sunday, January 1, 
He was granted leave for dropping off his children at school each day from 8 to 10.30 and picking up the kids from 3.15 to 6.45. Among other approved leave times was 11 a.m. to 1.30 for shopping on Wednesday, January 4th. On Sunday, the 1st, he had requested travel between 3 p.m. to 9 to drop off his mother. He told investigators his mother had a recent cataract surgery and she was staying with him at his residence so he could assist her. He said he had this time scheduled so he could bring her home after recovery. During the interviews with him, he stated his mother had recovered from surgery quicker than expected and had driven herself home. However, he still used the time he had approved to go visit her and run errands. The errands were the trips to Whole Foods and CVS that investigators later showed did not occur through the hours of viewing video evidence. It's important to note that this is day one of Anna being missing. Statements to investigators about his whereabouts on Monday the 2nd were consistent in that he took his oldest for ice cream or a smoothie at Press in Norwell. This was during the morning hours that he's allotted for school drop-off between... 8 and 10 30. there was no school monday january 2nd due to the holiday investigators uh, looked at surveillance of him at home depot in rockland wearing a black surgical mask mm -hmm. blue surgical gloves and made a cash purchase this trip was in violation of his probation conditions during this time the data from his cell phone data extraction give showed that his device traveled to Brockton and Abington during the week of February 1st. The itinerary for him was to leave from home and it does not include such towns for approved travel. This is not a complete list of his approved leave from home or pos in a, and a possible probation violation. The intentional, willful, and direct responses to questions about his whereabouts on the days of Sunday the 1st and Monday the 2nd were a clear attempt to mislead and delay investigators. Investigators explained that he would naturally be suspected of harming his wife due to her disappearance and they would need to account for his whereabouts. The fact that he was asked specific questions and he gave untruthful answers that led investigators out of the area caused a clear delay in the search for a missing person, Anna Walsh. He intentionally gave untruthful statements, knowing investigators would need to travel and cooperate each statement. In any criminal investigation or investigation into a missing person, physical evidence and video evidence has the risk of being lost. I know from training and experience that physical evidence, specifically evidence that is outside of the elements, may deteriorate over time. I also know any video surveillance varies in retention time. Video files may be overwritten frequently as, as frequently as every 24 hours and every second is valuable when searching for such evidence before it is lost. Based on the facts set forth herein and based on my training education experience and participation in this investigation, I submit there is probable cause to believe Brian Walsh has violated the following statutes and that's what this affidavit here says this was the other part that i was wondering if it would have been in the affidavit it it was not but it says here in addition investigators found search queries on brian's internet for how to dispose of a 115 pound woman's body and how to dismember a body according to two law enforcement sources briefed on the investigation. Investigators turned their focus from a missing person case to suspicion she may have been killed after receiving new information in the last three days. So I hadn't seen that yet, and that's absolutely crazy if this is accurate.